Are we the last generation not to live forever? When will humanity acquire immortality, as per the majority of scientific predictions? Will it happen soon enough to have an impact on all of us who are living today, or just some of us? In this video, we explore how far science has progressed in its quest for immortality and pose the question, are we generation death? Are we the last humans left to perish? Death has been an unavoidable fact of life for as long as there have been humans and life on earth, the essential component of any physical existence. But this seemingly unalterable truth is being tested more than ever in the 21st century. So, rather than accepting death, are we now on the verge of defeating it? Are we part of generation death? Will we be the last people to pass away? Scientists are beginning to pose these issues more frequently as it seems as though we are getting closer and closer to eternal existence. Of course, a lot depends on your current age. Which generation, if any, you personally belong to. The predictions do differ, but as of the early 2020s, the majority seem to indicate that members of Generation Z may be the first to have access to immortality. In broader projections, the slightly older millennials are also seen as potential immortals. But sadly, the prospects aren't as rosy for Generation X, which is often defined as people born between the middle of the 1960s and the beginning of the 1980s. With comparatively few estimates going back this far. Right now, according to the most popular predictions, you need to have been born in the mid-80s or later to potentially live forever. However, it's not all bad news for Gen Zers, and it's not like they, or anyone older than them, aren't likely to enjoy at least noticeably lengthy lives. The average life expectancy in the world has doubled since 1900, when many people didn't make it through their 50s due to advances in medicine. In general, everyone is living longer. The 20th century, which saw an unheard of acceleration in medical research and technology, is to credit for that. We're more adept than ever at identifying and treating illnesses nowadays. Today, we have the ability to immunize people, perform organ transplants, and administer antibiotics to treat a wide variety of illnesses, some of which may have previously been terminal. Additionally, we are more knowledgeable about good food and living. We must continue, nonetheless, for the question of today. One modern, widely used piece of technology is the gene editing method CRISPR. Additionally, CRISPR has enormous promise. It might even be utilized to destroy cancer. It could treat congenital disorders that were previously incurable. Some projections even suggest that it may be utilized to slow down or stop the aging process. Although there is already a sizable business devoted to making individuals look and feel youthful, CRISPR may be the missing piece. The most important component as well. Simply said, as you age, your body's cells become less capable of healing themselves, declining through your childhood and early adulthood into old age. However, you may maintain your body's capacity for rapid healing by using CRISPR. Preventing not only the aging process but also, in some optimistic predictions, ailments that become more prevalent as we age, such as Alzheimer's disease. The fact that CRISPR already exists, is being investigated, and is being used all over the world is crucial to understanding today's question. It is a real technological advancement. There are other ways to achieve immortality than CRISPR, and some people believe cloning to be the most effective strategy. Since the 1990s, we have been able to clone mammals. But if we could, example, perfect the technique of effectively duplicating human organs, we'd be able to use specialized transplants to save millions of lives every year. Theoretically, in a not-too-distant future, we may be able to quickly replace any portion of our body that breaks down. We may even be able to create younger cells artificially, delaying the aging process. At least, that is the plan. Hence it's simple to understand why many people believe in a future dominated by clones. Cloning's ethical implications are not simple, though. In the traditional sci-fi scenario, humans create completely new copies of themselves and occasionally use those clones as spares. But would it be right even if we had the technology to accomplish that? The clone you will have grown up in their own way and been created from an embryo, just like you were. 
they will also have a brain of their own. Due to this, the issue of clone rights is being discussed more and more as technology advances. Your brain, your memories, and your personality couldn't likely be morally implanted into the clone's new and enhanced body. Not without infringing numerous legal restrictions, most experts agree that it works when replacing specific body parts and organs, but full replacement bodies repeated indefinitely? Not likely. In this sense, cloning also doesn't clearly show how to carry on our individual consciousnesses. At the most fundamental level, immortality depends on the continuance of consciousness and the self. Cloning may therefore provide one means of achieving eternal life for the first generation to live forever, but it cannot provide a conclusive solution. For such, gene editing and CRISPR appear to be superior options. What does our own history have to say about immortality, then, if Gen Z actually does become the first generation to not perish? How has eternal life been envisioned in the past? For thousands of years, the general idea has been present in numerous cultures all over the world, frequently as a form of divine reward. Methuselah, the oldest man in the Bible, lived for about a thousand years, and several individuals from Greek mythology have experienced similar, if less pleasant, destinations. For example, the Greek goddess Eos' lover was Tithonus. Zeus granted him immortality at Eos's request because she didn't want to see him suffer. Famously, Eos neglected to request from Zeus that Tithonus likewise be given immortal youth. And, so, the rest of his existence became torture. Stories about eternal existence frequently contain a warning of this sort. Which begs the question, should we even be trying to achieve immortality? Should we be pitying or envious of the first, future humanity who never have to die if it is not to be for some of us? We have historically disagreed on this issue. How do you feel? Many religious believers place a great deal of importance on their beliefs on mortality and the hereafter, therefore, for many, immortality may raise more questions than it resolves. But many people would respond that they just don't want to live forever, regardless of their religious or cultural beliefs. The fact that the world's small, but expanding, community of immortalists has previously encountered diverse opposition may not come as a surprise. Even though the group's exact composition isn't entirely clear yet, it consists of individuals from various facets of society who are working and doing research to discover methods of extending life. While the majority of physicians and scientists may not explicitly identify as immortalists, an increasing number of them think that since saving lives is the ultimate purpose of medicine, immortality should be actively pursued and is actually the most moral thing a physician can do for a patient. The immortalist philosophy is sometimes criticized for its extreme and all-consuming efforts to extend life, nevertheless. Of course, trying to increase your physical activity or improve your diet with the goal of increasing your longevity is not a bad idea. However, skeptics caution that in the future, people may volunteer for more experimental operations or adopt other, riskier lifestyles in an effort to avoid dying. And this is where the promise of immortality may potentially become a dystopia, with everyone so determined to live forever that they never actually lead normal lives at all. One of science's ultimate ambitions becomes even more difficult to truly envision when you factor in the possibility that there may be a financial component to how immortality takes shape and takes hold of the human race, wherein it is only available to the very rich. We are all currently subject to death. It may not in the future but perhaps immortality won't either. Most projections made today indicate that if you're above 35 and viewing this video, you might never have the option of living forever. However, if you're younger, you might live to witness the first immortals. You might even adopt that role. Estimates suggest that the technology and scientific knowledge may be available to us before the end of the 21st century. Just how it will be put to use is still up in the air. We may be the final generation to not live indefinitely because of this. In conclusion, while the pursuit of immortality captures the imagination and provokes philosophical inquiry, we cannot confidently declare that the current generation will be the last to experience death. Although remarkable progress has been made in the fields of longevity research and technology, the complexities of aging and the moral implications of immortality present significant hurdles. 
As technology and scientific understanding continue to advance, it is crucial to address the ethical concerns associated with immortality. Ultimately, our pursuit of longevity should strive to enhance the quality, rather than just the length, of human life.